Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I am in Luminar Neo working through what I consider a fairly difficult edit for me. This was a photo I took in Iceland a couple of years ago when I was there on the Luminar Photo Camp. And it's Iceland, so there's a, a bit of drama in the photo, especially in the sky. Uh, but as I walked through the edit various times over the last couple of years, I was never completely satisfied with what I came up with. I want to keep the drama, I want to accentuate certain parts of the image, but I never really liked it until now. And so what I did is I kind of walk, uh, in this video, I'm going to walk through what I did with the photo, show you how I edited it, and hopefully give you some ideas how you can also kind of overcome what may be a difficult edit for you. Let me show you, here's the photo, and of course it's very dark, but what I often find is that like with a difficult edit, you might start and just say, well, this one needs you know, more uh, an increase in exposure, maybe a little bit of contrast, let's put on the highlights, lift, let's, you know, let's lift the shadows, uh, and you might experiment with temperature next and try to decide where do you want that to go, and maybe a little bit of a tint and a little bit of vibrance, uh, maybe not that much tint, you know, and then, I was always kind of getting something like this, and I was like, well, right, well that's kind of flat, um, but it's not particularly exciting. So then I might go into, you know, enhance AI and take Accent AI and do something like that, but that heightens the drama and gets a little bit more intensity. But again, it wasn't really the look I was looking for. And so the first thing that I recommend that you do is actually what I just did. When you have a difficult edit is go in and do just some basic things in develop and maybe Accent AI or maybe just Accent AI to see what it does to your photo because that might give you an idea of what direction you want, you want to go with your edit. So in other words, experiment before you decide on what route you're going to take. So I did a bit of experimentation. I knew I wanted it to be brighter, but there were some things, like I said, I wanted to accentuate in the photo. So I'm going to reset these and I'm going to walk you through what I actually did. Okay, so I started in Develop Raw and the first thing I want to do is fix the distortion. There we go. That actually looks wonderful. And then the next thing, of course, was to increase the exposure on the image just simply because it was too dark. So while I've done that, I'm going to add some smart contrast as well. I actually pull the highlights down negative 100 and that's because of that part of the sky. Now, as you could tell, the original image was fairly dark and I was basically, for lack of a better word, kind of exposing for the highlights. I wanted to capture them. So if you look at the before and after, I think I've done a really good job of keeping those highlights in check and yet brightening up the image uh, considerably, which is about to get enhanced by me moving the shadows to the right, and I'm going to about 32. So now I've got a, you know, a reasonably balanced image, and the next thing I'm going to do is go into blacks and whites, and I'm actually going to lift the whites here about 18 and pull the blacks down uh, a negative 28. And this is essentially just kind of accentuating contrast creating a little bit brighter in some areas, a little bit darker in others. And that's something that I find myself doing quite a bit. And then while I'm at it, I'm also going to go into curves and I'm going to drop three little dots here on the tone curve. And I'm going to pull that slightly down and I'm going to pull this slightly up. I don't want to overdo it. It's just a very gentle S curve, but I've been able to create a little bit more contrast. And if you're not familiar with how curves works, I recommend checking out that video, which I did recently explaining how curves work. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea. And then I went into color, and that's another thing that I might point out is I will often, because colors are frequently off um, in my photos compared to how I want them to look, and so I often will go into temperature and tint and things like that early on. And in this case, I wanted to wait a little bit and get the light centered or, or situated first, I guess. Um, the next thing I do, whoa, not that far. I'm going to go to about a 59. So there you go. 59, 71 looks good. And about a 19 on tent, which is really just like, you know, one little bump up in the, uh, where the tent was. And then vibrance is going up about 22. I do want to have some vibrance in the photo, but I don't want to overdo the saturation. There's a lot of drama, like I said, especially in the sky. And yes, I do see the drone. Uh, somebody in our group is flying a drone. It was in the photo. I kind of like it there. It's kind of like it's looking down on the town. Well, technically, I guess it is looking down on the town. But um, anyway, so at this point, I got to here with my uh, raw file and develop raw from that to that. And I was thinking, okay, I'm in pretty good shape already. I'm happy about that. And then I went in and got Accent AI. So again, I think Accent AI is a, uh, on a photo that you can't decide what to do with is a great way to start just to give you some idea because it impacts so many things in a photo, contrast, saturation, things like that, that it can give you a good idea. And that's why I recommend step one being experiment. Step two is once you've experimented and sort of picked the uh, direction you want to go, make that decision and kind of commit to it and march down that direction. Having said that, the uh, basically third step that I'm talking about is actually to continue experiment. 
uh, experimenting with your photos. So experiment and then decide and then experiment. So it's, it's a bit of a triangle and I tend to go between them quite a bit, uh, continuing moving around. I experiment, figure out what I want to do. I commit to that. So I decide and then I'm heading down the path. And while I'm on that path headed toward whatever I decided on, I'm continuing to experiment to make sure I'm getting there in the way that I want to get there. And of course, getting the result that I want. Now you can see some stuff in the sky. It actually started to kind of snow on us. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a negative, about a negative 40. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a masking job where I paint this into the sky. So let me do that real quick. I'll do that with a super big brush. So there looks something like that. Just wanted to smooth the sky a little bit. I love the drama in the clouds. I just don't want them to be overly crunchy. And I also want to smooth it out a little bit simply because I kind of like softer, puffier clouds. Although I don't want to overdo it so much that I lose some of the definition in those clouds. So I think I've been able to balance that pretty well. There it is before and there it is now. I actually might pull that back just a little bit. So maybe like a 35 instead. Again, season to taste. Obviously everything that you do in your photos is, uh, is you know, based on your own preferences. Um, the next thing I noticed is that there are a couple of parts of the image where I do want to bring up some of those warmer tones. And so for me, warm tones is often golden hour. So let me go ahead and get that. I go to about a 50 here, but once again, this is a masking job. And so I went in at strength of 100, uh, and I wanna do that in some parts of the sky. I don't wanna do the entire sky. I just kinda wanna do this section of the sky at about 100. And so that's picking up all of those warmer tones kind of just over there. Now there's also some nice warm tones in the ground, but the thing is I don't want to paint it in at the same rate. So you can actually come in and reduce the strength here. And I'm going to go to about a 50 and I'm going to paint that into the foreground with a little bit of a smaller brush. And so I'm coming over here with a less intense uh, brush and basically painting a little bit of golden hour into some parts of the ground. I think something like that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to take golden hour down to about a 42, 43, all I'm trying to do is get a little bit of warmth where the sun is kind of breaking through that cloud. And I also want a little bit of that warmth in the ground, but not as much as I want it in the sky. So you can create different opacity masks on the same instance of the tool in different parts of the photo. That's what I did here. So there it is before golden hour and there it is after. A bit warmer and brighter in the sky and just a little bit more added to the uh, ground itself. Now I knew I wanted to continue to kind of enhance the mood. And for me, one of the best tools for that is mystical. And so I came over here to mystical and I went about a 25 or so. Um, the thing is that does create some contrast and shadow and I don't want to have too much darkness in the foreground. So I did lift the shadows about a 40 or so just to give back uh, or bring back a little bit of light into that foreground. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after. It also creates a little bit of a dreamy look in my opinion because it tends to smooth things out a little bit. So again, just be careful about how you employ that and where. Don't hesitate to mask it into your photo if it makes sense for you. In this case, I wanted to apply it across the entire photo. It does add a little bit of mood and let's be honest, I'm, I'm working on a fairly moody photo here and I just noticed something. I actually want to erase it from around the church. I don't really want a whole lot of that um, shadowy contrast kind of stuff right here around the church. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Something like that it continues to maintain my visibility around the church, but it uh, gives me a little bit of that ni nice mystical look everywhere else in the photo. Okay, now another tool that I recommend experimenting with a whole lot on really any photo is super contrast. It just gives you so much control over the light. And I think in this photo, I could do a better job of kind of balancing the light. And so what I did is I went to about a 21 or 22 on highlights. I went to about a 31 or so on the midtones, and I did the same on shadows. Now, having done that, I went in and did some adjustments to the balance. I went to a full 73 here. I went to negative 49. Uh, here we go on midtones and about a negative 43 in the shadows. And so let me just do that. There we go. You can see that balances things out quite a bit. Let me show you the before and after. There it is before and there it is after. The great thing about super contrast is because it isolates the different tonal areas, highlights, midtones, and shadows, it's really helping me adjust the light in each of them. But there's probably something that you picked up that happened here that you want to be aware of with super contrast and that is color shifting. Well, not really color shifting, but saturation kind of enhancement. When you're adjusting contrast, it does make those colors pop a bit more. I'm getting a lot more blue than I had before. 
There it is before, definitely a lot of blue in the sky, but more of a gray blue, but now it's a lot more of a baby blue, and um, it's getting a little bit too much for me, so we're gonna have to go fix that. However, that's an easy fix in Neo, so don't, you know, it's not something I was worried about, I, but I wanted to adjust the light, which took me from there to there, so that's one of those experiment things where use super contrast to experiment with the light levels in your photos, because it will really help you fundamentally shift how the photo looks uh, in terms of the distribution of light. I think, you know, it's maybe not a massive difference, but if you consider where it was and where it is, it's definitely noticeable. So keep that in mind. Great tool for experimentation in any image. Okay, so I'm gonna close that and commit it, and I'm gonna head over to color. And the first thing I want to do here is go into HSL. And I love HSL, I talked about it in that video where I talked about color. HSL for me is about control and finesse in an image. And so in this case, I want to control the blue because there is just too much. And so I'm gonna pull that down about a negative 35. I just wanna reduce the intensity of the blue. I love blue skies, I love blue cloudy skies. I just don't want them to be too blue. And that is too much blue and too baby blue and too saturated. I want it to be something like that where you still have the drama of this intense sky, but you don't have like that visual sugar rush of too much color kind of coming through. And while I was at it, I also went into orange and I reduced the saturation there about 20. I felt like a little bit in the foreground, it was getting to be too much. And then I went into luminance and I pulled that down slightly as well. Also on the orange, which is darkening a little bit of that foreground right there in front of me. We were up on a hill basically overlooking this church. This is Vic Iceland, V-I-K. At least I call it Vic. It may be pronounced uh, different. But there it is, a little bit more intense color all over, especially the oranges in the foreground and the blue in the sky and now a little bit reduced. Also, I like how the blue of the parking lot has been reduced because there, it's really picking up that blue hint, uh, tint, whatever you wanna call it, that's in the sky. Now it's a lot more subtle, just looks better to my eye. And like I said, I don't wanna overdo the saturation in this image. I love saturation, I love colors, but there's a lot going on. I mean, you've got this you know, interesting church on a hill overlooking this little town. In the background, you've got this amazing sky and these hills crashing down to the coast along with these uh, like sea stacks out there. It's, it's just a beautiful place. It's really interesting and uh, frankly, visually powerful. And I don't want to overdo the drama by too much detail or too much crunch or too much color. I just kind of want it to be um, kind of a nice, even-handed kind of edit, I guess is a way of looking at it. And then I really just wrap it up with a vignette. I'm going to go about a negative 37 or 38 here. And size is coming down to about 20. Uh, can't seem to get a hold of this. There you go. Something like 25, 26. And inner light is going to go up to about, whoops, not that much, about a 10 or 12, something about like that. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before. It seems almost a little bit darker in the center once you turn on the inner light and then compare it. I mean, obviously it is darker in the center before you do that, but it's just visually quite different to me. And I like that the vignette giving that slight darkening to that foreground. I kind of like that. It really helps focus my eye, and I feel like I'm a little bit more going to the church and those sea stacks and that cloud formation, which is kind of going up and kind of back that way. Now, my final edit, I'll probably just erase that drone. Uh, I'm leaving it here for now, but um, it's a little bit visually distracting because you see this big spot in the sky. So, you know what? Hey, we'll just do the erase now. Why not? Distraction removed. I'm going to go ahead and close the erase tool. And that's my edit, my friends. That is how I overcame what I considered a bit of a difficult edit. And a lot of it was due to the challenges of the lighting. I mean, dramatic light and all that uh, underexposed on purpose, but looked like that and now looks like that. And I feel like I was able to balance out the light, balance the color. There's nice color in it. The other thing I think about is that the primary colors are really the warm tones and the cool tones. And so that's kind of the blues and the yellows. And if you remember, blue and yellow are opposite each other. They're basically complementary colors. So we're kind of playing off the blue in the sky and the yellow in the foreground, kind of playing off of each other. And like I said, wanted to get a more balanced image. I think I've been able to do that. And for me, the key is experiment, decide, experiment, decide, experiment, decide, etc. So key things to experiment with, develop tool, 
Accent AI Super Contrast, because those are the ones that I think you can use to have a huge impact on the light distribution in your photo, which is also contrast, the difference between the brighter and the darker areas. And because they give you so much control, they give you a great idea of what you can do and what direction you can go. So that is my image, my friends. One more time, here's a before and after. That's what it started like, and that's where it is now. I'm finally happy with this edit. And I think the only other thing I might try is converting it to a monochrome simply because these kind of dramatic scenes also look really good in monochrome. I'll probably come back and do some monochrome stuff. If you want to see some videos about monochromes in Luminar Neo, drop me a comment down below. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that as well. I'll be creating a lot of Luminar Neo content. Mostly, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate you guys coming by, hanging out, interacting with me. I'll be back soon with more Neo videos. Till then, you guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you later and adios.